If I was at the beginning of my career looking to get started as a professional hacker, specifically like an ethical hacker, a penetration tester, there's a couple different names for it, then this video is for you because I'm gonna be talking about what I would do if I was just starting out today. If you're looking at like incident response, reverse engineering, malware analysis, like any of those things, this video is not gonna be for you. This is specifically for penetration testing, ethical hacking, being hired to break into networks for a living Here's what I would do to get started. And the first thing I'm gonna cover, we actually covered like the dirty secrets of cybersecurity on a live stream last week. But one of the things we talked about is like, do you need a degree? Do you need certifications? How important are those things? So first and foremost, I don't think a degree is important. Like I don't think it should be like a core of your education, especially when you're getting started. For penetration testing, ethical hacking, the career field has kind of changed. I think early on when I was getting started, a degree was needed. Like, I don't know why, maybe it's like a generational thing, a big enterprise thing. If you're going in, if you're planning to like work in a big enterprise, a degree can help you because they don't always have technical tracks. Like if you want to get to a CISO level position where you're going to be a people leader, they tend to like you to have like an MBA. But for penetration testing, especially like my firm and other smaller firms, we just care about the skill set, and a degree doesn't really demonstrate that. For things like if you're going to become a software engineer or software developer, those can help you like learn how to structure languages. This is something Gowry said in the video, but specifically in penetration testing, I don't think a degree really helps all that much. That's not to say like don't finish a degree if you have it, but if I didn't have one or I wasn't working on it. I would actually start with a few different maybe certificates. And I didn't think necessarily certificates are like the end all be all. I do think like for me, the gold standard, like something which really like makes me pull a resume is the OSCP. That's the Offensive Security uh, Certified Professional. I have a lot of love for that certification. There's a lot of reasons to this, mainly because it's hands on and they continue to adapt it. And what's cool is it's not that expensive compared to like SANS courses, but there's education built in for it. It's not like some of the other ones where it's like, okay, go buy a book and take a test. You get like a full blown training and lab environment. So you get to learn the course and they don't necessarily like drag you by the nose through the curriculum. Meaning like, I want you to learn this and then here's a test which exactly matches that education module. It tends to be like, here's some concepts that you need to go teach yourself to then be able to overcome this challenge. Big fan of those certifications. There's other ones that a lot of people will say are like basic ones like Security Plus, Network Plus. I, well, those are great and they are some underlying knowledge. I don't think they're necessarily ones that really help you think like outside the box. Like that's one of the biggest things you have to learn within hacking and professional hacking is outside the box thinking. The hacking mindset is ultimately just thinking outside the box. An example with software, and again, I have props. I have a My Child's toy right here, but I was laughing. This toy drives me nuts, but it shows so much what the hacking mindset is because it's very similar to QA. When you're testing an application, you go, here's a giraffe. Where does the giraffe go? You're right, it goes in the giraffe hole. Very good, let's test another one. Where does the crocodile go? You're right, it goes in the giraffe hole. What about the elephant? The elephant? It does it go in the elephant? No, it goes in the giraffe hole. That's exactly where it is. The tiger, you're right. The tiger, it goes in the giraffe hole. So much of hacking is really thinking outside the box and trying things that people haven't done before. And this is why I really think most people should start with web security hacking. Not only is it massively needed in the industry, but like network hacking, like network layer penetration testing tends to follow a very um, strict methodology. Like you're always looking for very similar things. We're in web and even like networking, there's a lot of like nuance that you might have to learn where web application hacking is a great place to get started, mainly because it doesn't require you to have a lot of programming knowledge. And this falls into another thing I'll talk about in a little bit, which is like, should you be learning programming? Because with web security or web application penetration testing, you don't really have to know programming because it doesn't matter what the, what the backend is programmed in, whether it's you know, PHP, Node.js, like any backend, every API ultimately needs to interact with a browser. And that's typically where you test web applications. Is as hackers, we use a web proxy like OWASP Zap, and that's a free one. There's a paid one, which is 
uh, Burp Professional, which I really like. But if you're getting started, OWASP Zap is great. It's free, it's open source, it runs on like anything. But that proxy sits between the browser and like, here's the browser, there's the proxy, and then the application. And it doesn't matter what coding language this is, because ultimately it still needs to interact with the browser and that's a great place to test. And this is also a great way to learn, mainly because there's so many awesome resources which are free online. Everywhere from like OWASP, which has the secure dojo, which is awesome. You can spin it up on your local machine. It has training materials. It has like hands-on testing, but I wouldn't even get started there. If you're new to the industry, I would start with something like a Pico CTF, P-I-C-O CTF. I'll put like a link in the description because they have a great learning track. Now, this is geared towards what they call like middle school, high school schoolers which yeah, sure, but like ultimately, it doesn't matter where you are in the industry, it's a great one just to get in there and learn it very easily. From there, I would move on to try HackMe. They have a great learning program, a great learning track, and then they build it on more advanced. While I really like Hack the Box, I think it has great resources, I don't think they have as good of a training segment at least like it, it just becomes really advanced. I think like try hack me Pico CTF are is a great place to start. And it doesn't require you again to know programming. You can just jump in and start learning some of the vulnerabilities that exist within web browsers. Talking about programming a little bit more, I do think programming definitely gives you a leg up, especially it makes your uh, reports so much more richer. It makes your remediation advice to programmers so much better because you understand you understand like the underlying concepts and what the vulnerabilities are like on the back end code and how to fix them. However, it's not like a requirement for getting into this field, and I don't think it's one of the first things to start with. If you are looking to start like learning programming, I think like using a scripting language like Python or Node.js, I would choose one of those two. If you wanna focus on web applications, Node.js I think is like a very good one to learn because a lot of applications live off of JavaScript and you get to learn a language which really is used for everything. You can program front ends, uh, back ends, uh, APIs, so much in JavaScript. You can do the same with Py thing with Python. Python's very easy to use. Both of these are more scripting languages uh, where there's like, um, interpreter you're going through in that it's not like a good underlying language like a C or C sharp or Golang or one of those but I tend to say start with one of those if you're new into the industry the most important thing you can do like we have talked about it during live streams we talked about it during like how to interview the dirty secrets the most important thing you can do is learn how to document and you start right from the beginning when you're doing CTFs write up like the how-to steps. If you write a piece of code, put it into GitHub. Like as an employer, someone who's constantly looking for smart people, that is one, that is the most important thing. I did another video talking about the most important thing within a penetration testers like Arsenal is being able to document because at the end of the day, that is all clients get oftentimes is a well-written report which communicates risk. There is so much to learn in this field. Like as long as I've been in the field, I'm still finding big verticals that I still need to focus on. And it's so easy to become overwhelmed. Legitimately, if you have a question, leave it as a comment down below. I'll try and answer them as many as I can. I will ask you if you have, if you got anything out of this video, please give it a thumbs up. It kind of signals to people that this is a video with good content. And then the other thing I want to mention is how would you go about, how would I go about getting a job? The best thing you can do is start fostering a community with other individuals, whether it's like in a comment in this video, whether after you get your OSCP, reaching out to other people's in the forums, putting a post on LinkedIn, heck, I hired someone who reached out to me from YouTube, easily the coolest thing that has happened on this channel. So. As Gator likes to say on the live streams, love your hacker family, dive in in 2022, and as always, hack on.